From the News Channel 5 Network, this is Inside Politics. Hello, everyone. I'm News Channel 5's political analyst, Pat Nolan. Welcome to Inside Politics. Last week's August 7th primary and general election in Tennessee had one of the longest ballots in state history. So there remains quite a bit of political fallout to sift through and analyze about what it all means. To help us do that today, we brought in a duo of political experts, including right next to me, Nashville lawyer and Democratic uh, strategist Larry Woods. And next to him is the news director of the Tea Party Network, Scotty Hughes. Thank you both for coming in today. Thank you. Glad to be here, even though all my candidates didn't win. But you're getting used to that. <laughs> aren't you? As Democrat of Tennessee, you are getting used to it. And one of the big spotlight races was for the U.S. Senate. Now, Republican incumbent Lamar Alexander won renomination, but Scotty, he fell short of getting the 50% majority. It wasn't required, but I think think he wanted to be at least 50 percent. Are you surprised that that happened, that Joe Carr got as high as 40 percent? I think lots of people were very surprised that Joe Carr got as high as he did, except for the fact that people went in there and they voted not for Joe Carr, but they voted against Lamar. And that was the one thing we have seen, that Lamar has gone to Washington, D.C. and has not been voting amongst what many conservatives in Tennessee would want. And we know that because basically if you look at all of his campaign commercials, the first race is, I'm a conservative. He literally stole the term conservative from us. It used to be like a curse word. It was the C word in politics. And now he had on every commercial saying he was the true conservative. But Larry Alexander is the nominee for the Republicans. Does he run any differently in the general election? So far, it doesn't look like it. I think Lamar Alexander is going to be smart politically. And in the general election, he's going to try to pick up some Democratic votes because he knows a lot of the Tea Party or very conservative Republicans are unhappy with him. And therefore, they're going to come in there and vote in the other elections and probably just skip voting in his. So I think you'll see Lamar trying to appeal to some of the Democratic base. Now, Scotty, is this particular election another sign that in Tennessee politics, the conservatives just can't seem to quite get behind a single conservative candidate and because their vote gets split? It, the moderate candidate wins again. It's a great plan that the moderates have in the so-called establishment, even here in Tennessee. Let's put four people in a race. If you would have added all the votes of all the other candidates and put it together for one, we would have well, had do Joe think, Carr. Do you think Lamar, he didn't put Joe Carr in the race. Did he put Flynn in the race? You know, that's what the rumors might say. But if anything, I guarantee he didn't call Flynn and say, you know what, I think you need to sit this one out. I, I, I guarantee he did a little happy dance. But it, well, the, I think the interesting thing we need to learn from this race is, I guarantee that night Lamar went to sleep feeling very unsettled because he knew that there was an issue amongst the state before he'd been elected back with larger numbers than this. And now he's going, wait a minute, maybe uh, maybe this isn't working. But he's already said that he's going to falter on immigration. Uh, he said within his campaign commercials that he was going to stay strong on immigration, he's already talking about compromise. Now, Larry, hindsight's always 2020. One of the things Joe Carr tried to do was go out and get the national PAC groups to come into Tennessee and spend money, particularly to attack Lamar Alexander. These right. are even some of the groups that had said Lamar Alexander was their number one target for defeat in 2014. They didn't do it. In hindsight, if they had done that, would we be looking at a very different primary result? It would have been different. I'm not saying Lamar would have lost, but it would have been much closer because it's the old rubric in politics, Democrat, Republican, liberal, conservative. If the three of us are running and Scotty and I appear to be winning and you appear to be way back, it's going to be tough for you to get money or support. You know, everybody sort of wants to be for the winner. And the entire primary, Lamar looked and sounded like the winner. Now, it was surprised the national PACs that put Lamar number one on their hit list, you would have thought they would have put a lot of money in regardless, and that didn't happen. So, so Scotty, why, did, why didn't that happen? Why, why, did the, why, did the, why did the national groups say, nope, no thanks? I think a lot of the national groups were very much burned from Mississippi. I think they had put all in for Mississippi <coughs> for the McDaniel race, and because of things outside of their control, you know, you sat there and you put Cochran in, and they're going, wait a minute, we had our name attached to this. Now, you have to understand, from a Tea Party conservative viewpoint, we don't judge our success based on our wins or our losses. That's not what we judge. We are a movement. So we're trying to move elected officials to talk about the conservative issues, but which is what Tea we Party did tied all over the country to knock off a moderate establishment senator, and they didn't beat a single one of them this year. Well, but that's the thing is we made them, we made the people that did get reelected talk about the issues and go on the record. That's the issue. You know, if you want to look back to five years ago, the other uh, the other movement that started the same time, the Tea Party, it's called Occupy, and they're out of business. You don't hear anything about them, yet the Tea Party is still rolling along strong. So, yes, per se, did we necessarily have a win? Not, ne not really, but we did push the issue, and we have a seat at the table, and they're having to address us. Now, Larry, if you you look at what happened in some of the school board races, particularly over in Williamson County, you look at the numbers 
the returns in the Senate race, particularly in the Middle Tennessee area, Nashville and around it, you can tell that while some people say the Tea Party is dying nationally, they can be pretty strong on some issues in certain parts of this state for sure. No question. They, they won several elections in Williamson County. They won several elections in Sumner County. Uh, on local elections, the Tea Party is probably much stronger than it is statewide. Statewide, their problems, just what Scotty alluded to earlier, as the Tea Party becomes more powerful or more successful, moderate candidates like Lamar Alexander are going to start adopting their message, their labels, their... Co-opting uh, it. Yes. And, and stealing. Historically, I call stealing. <laughs> okay. Historically, that's what's always happened. You know, the Henry Wallace Party, the progressives, the any third party you want to name, that's usually spelled the end of them is when the middle, the moderates start co-opting. Uh, Scotty, in the wake of this primary, are the conservatives, the Tea Party folks going to look at changing the way the vote is done? Are they going to look at closed primaries that you have to be registered as a Republican or a Democrat to vote? Are they going to look at doing a runoff system? Tennessee does not have runoffs. You talked about the one in Mississippi. Right. You know, I think that is exactly what you're going to look at. And this Saturday, uh, there's actually the meeting of the Tennessee Republican Party. Their SEC is meeting for the last session of the old group with the new group coming in in September. Uh, I think that's going to be on their agenda. That's one of the things that the majority of people on there. And you've got a very conservative national um, Republican Executive Committee. Now we're going to have a very conservative and truly conservative one. Never before have you seen such a turnover of the SEC. And I think it's about to be reflective in their policy and their leadership. Okay, let's take a break. We're talking with Scotty Hughes from the uh, Tea Party News Network. And Larry Woods, Democrat here from Nashville Attorney, talking about the aftermath of the uh, August 7th election, back to go through more of that fallout after this break. <laughs> 